we now continue with confession and forgiveness, which Travis is going to share on his screen. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. A life of kindness, of respect, of responsibility to the people we know, the people we don't know. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, and it's in our Cranberry Hymnal, uh, number 377, or if you happen to have a blue with one voice at home, it's hymn number 674. The tune is a familiar one, um, uh, even if you don't happen to have the words in front of you, it's to earth and all stars. Uh, so we sing, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. <laughs> Jesus. 
Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now, if you are a family with children, I invite you to unmute yourself. Hi, who is that? Jackson. Hi, Jackson. Say hi. It's good to see you. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Anna. Is Owen with you too? Yeah, say hi. 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 Who else do we have? We're, we're trying to get Kylie to come over too. Oh, okay. Here she comes. Hi, Kylie. Say hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. Hi, I heard, I heard that. And, um, hi, there they are. And I see Kyle's on the call, and um, a couple of other of our youth are on the call. So it's so good uh, to see all of you today. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, is today a special day in your household? Yes. Yeah, what is today? Mother's Day. Mother's Day? And what have you done in your house to help celebrate? Just for presents. What? Uh, I'm looking to Travis. Presents? You gave your mom presents? How about somebody else? I made the coffee. You made the coffee? Oh, how wonderful. Me too. In, in our house, uh, the person who makes the coffee is the favoriteest person of the moment. That is a very important job in our house, uh, especially in the morning. So presents and coffee. And I see some of the adults, they are drinking coffee at the moment as well. And, um, I, Jackson, I can see your mom has her coffee cup right there. He made it for me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. How, how about uh, other folks? What what have you done for your mom, or what are you planning on doing for your mom today? Mom? 
I made my mom eggs. Oh, wow. He made the toast. Oh, that's wonderful. He's shy. That's okay. I bet it was the best toast that she's going to have all year. Yeah. And we did laundry today, too. You did laundry. That, that's important, too. And a really important skill to get good at doing. Kyle, I can tell you're debating. Um, I want you to unmute yourself. And what are you doing? <laughs> Go ahead. I, um, I went to the store. <laughs> you went to the store? <laughs> Nothing. What are you going to do for me today? Uh, Make some dinner. Make dinner, yeah. Make dinner. Make dinner. Anything in particular? Um, hamburgers. Hamburgers. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Mm -hmm. We we go from flurries yesterday t to hamburgers today. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a a wonderful um way to celebrate Mother's Day. And um, how many of you are are sending um cards to your mom? So wave your hand if you're sending cards to your mom. I know I sent, yeah, I sent cards. Um, uh, wave your hands if, if, you're, um, if you're a little sad today because your mom isn't with you. Yeah. Today, uh, I'm actually going to read uh, in our gospel lesson, uh, Jesus saying, uh, I am the way and the truth and the life. And oftentimes we learn um, which way to go or not go um, because of the influence of our families and those who care for us and who help parent us. So today is Mother's Day and we give thanks for not only our moms, but also um, all moms and all people who, who kind of form us and show us uh, the right way to go. So we pray together. Uh, dear God, dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who shows us the way. Who shows us the way. Thank you for our faith family. Thank you for our faith family. And thank you for our moms. And thank you for our moms. Keep us safe. Keep us safe. Until we can come back together again. Until we can come back together again. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for unmuting yourselves and for joining us today. And uh, I, I hope your coffees turned out well and your toasts and your dinners and all of your cards. Um, and the most important thing is that they are made with love. So we'll see you again soon. Our first reading today is verses from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. 
Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I walk over to the pulpit this morning, our gospel lesson uh, is John 14, 1 to 14. So if you would like to look it up uh, on your computers or in your Bible, feel free to do so. It's John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen my Father. Then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do, not, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One time, in a land far, far away, and a time long, long ago, I was in high school. And I went to a meeting out of town, and I was with the adults in this meeting. And we had to stop by our local big box store, either uh, Walmart or Kmart or Target. And as we were checking out, the checkout person said to us, it's going to weather tonight. It's going to weather tonight. And the adults I was with said, 
where? And she looked at us rather incredulously, like she couldn't believe that we were asking her this question. And with a little bit of indignation in her voice, she said, well, outside. We were asking her where in the surrounding area was the weather going to come? And she thought we meant, well, was it going to weather inside or outside? And I still have a good chuckle at that all these years later. The misunderstanding, the sense of irony, that colored the rest of my trip. But it also is the sense that perhaps we need to look at when we look at the Gospel of John. Because John is full of all of those sorts of riddles. If you remember a few weeks ago, we had this guy named Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night. And they had this conversation where they were talking past each other. Jesus was talking about being born anew and being born again. And Nicodemus thought that he was actually talking about being born a second time and was utterly confused about how that could actually physically happen. Or the very next chapter when Jesus has a conversation with a woman at the well and they have this interesting uh, play between them where they just where when Jesus says give me a drink of water and the woman obliges uh, Jesus all of a sudden starts talking about living water and never thirsting again so then we get to today's gospel reading in the 14th chapter of John where Jesus says uh, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And oftentimes in Christian history, we see that verse being used as a proof text, as a way of saying, you had better get right with Jesus or else you have no hope of entering either the kingdom of God or seeing God. That is our weather moment, I think. Because when Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, that is very true. But who is standing before them but the very way, truth, and life itself? Where Jesus isn't necessarily putting up a boundary or a gate like he did last week, but he's saying, look, the, the way, the truth, and the life is not necessarily a path, but it is a person. And the person is standing right here. It's not so much that Jesus is the way or the journey, or Jesus is the way to something better. Jesus is the end. Jesus himself is the way and the truth and the life. Because later on in the reading, he goes on to do what we like to call in my weekly Bible study, uh, spiritual calisthenics. And it goes something like this. I'm in me, and the Father is in me. I am in the Father, and the Father and I are one. And we just end up doing all of this because everything is connected. And you stand up, and you sit down, and you raise your hands four times because everything, again, is 
connected. I am in the Father and the Father is in me and everything that I do, the Father does and everything that the Father does is shown in me. And if you want to know the Father, then know me and then believe the works that I do because they show the Father. And by the end of trying to figure all of this out, whew, you are tired. You have had one heck of a spiritual workout. But that is the point that Jesus is the point. And it is the most inclusive claim there is. And yet also incredibly exclusive. A mentor of mine once said, Jesus came to save the whole world, everything and everyone but Jesus is the only savior of the world. Jesus is being incredibly inclusive by saying everyone is included and yet incredibly excluded by saying, I am the only savior of the world. So today I give thanks for that checkout clerk in Marion, Virginia, who still makes me chuckle. Well, where is it going to weather? Outside, there is truth and there is good news and there is gospel when we sometimes talk past each other. I am reminded of the grace of God for the incredible inclusivity of Jesus and for his exclusive claim that he is the one who has come to save not only us, but all creation. And so for that, we can say together, thanks be to God. Announcements this morning. Thank you to all of you who helped volunteer to either deliver meals or make meals for Family Promise. All of the slots are filled for our week and we continue to pray that the two families in the program uh, are on their way to sustainability and self-sufficiency and you are helping to make that happen so thank you very much we also uh, received our payroll protection program loan this past week and so a thank you to those of you uh, who helped make that happen and some of you might know that for the past couple of weeks we have been asking for uh, food donations for the Governor Mifflin power packs for the families of five. And there was a wonderful picture in the paper on Thursday uh, as some of these were delivered or distributed at Emmanuel's UCC. So if you get a chance, look in Thursday or Friday's paper and you can see uh, the fruits of your donations and your labor. Uh, thank you very much. In terms of uh, other congregational activities happening, uh, one of the things that we would like to do is to recognize our graduates like we do every year. And this year we have two that are graduating from high school, Maddie Klein and Jack Jacobs. Uh, Maddie uh, 
is graduate, they're both are graduating from Mifwin and we would like to be able to celebrate them as part of our faith family. And so for that, uh, we're asking you to submit a 30 second to one minute video for each of them. So two separate videos where you share uh, well wishes, um, perhaps uh, a favorite moment of faith that has guided you, uh, advice for the future, or maybe even um, a favorite memory you have of them as they have grown up here at St. John's. Uh, Alan Sylvester is going to then put those clips together for a longer uh, video, which we will share on June 14th uh, during Sunday morning worship. And uh, if you would like uh, more information, please be in touch with me. I can uh, pass Alan's information on. Or if you are not sure uh, how to do that, uh, we still would like to hear your voice uh, and have your participation. So be in touch with Mary Noggle. Mary Noggle, and she can record you uh, so you can participate in this project. Other people updates. Uh, Nancy Slichter is in the hospital uh, with complications of MRSA, uh, a resistant bacteria due to uh, foot surgery last week. Uh, Mark Young, uh, the person who diligently cleans our parish house, uh, has been diagnosed with pneumonia. And uh, once we receive his mailing address, uh, for those of you who would like to send cards, we can get that out as well. We also received word this past week that Barbara Tothero, a resident at Berksheim, uh, has tested positive for COVID-19. Fortunately, as of now, her symptoms are low-grade fever. She she does not exhibit any more serious symptoms than a hundred degree fever. And we're thankful that the folks at Berksheim are being proactive. Um, in her case, there, there was another resident on the hall who began to exhibit symptoms. And so they tested everyone on the hall and uh, found that Barbara herself was positive. Um, for those of you who would like uh, her mailing address, uh, I believe uh, Travis may have it at the end of the lyrics. So we will leave that up for those of you who would like her address. Are there any other prayer requests? I just realized my microphone might have been, it was on, okay. Still worshiping from our homes, but with our hearts bonded into one, let us pray for all who are in need. Responding with each petition with the words from today's Psalm, make haste to deliver us. Build us up, O oh God, that like living stones, we may embody the strength that only you can give. As you provided the early church with apostles and disciples, fill now the church's need for leaders to serve your holy people. O oh God, incline your ear to us. Make haste to deliver us. Form us to be humble participants in your complex creation. Even in the midst of snow flurries in May, we praise your power in the evolving of a magnificent earth. Lead us to respect all that you have made. O oh God, incline your ear to us. Make haste to deliver us. Assist the leaders of nations to find and follow your ways of justice. 
guide their way through the challenges of pandemic and poverty, protect governors and legislatures from sickness and burnout. Despite our own considerable needs, keep us mindful of the needs of others. O oh God, incline your ear to us. Make haste to deliver us. Accompany those who are sick, sorrowful, or confused. Comfort them in suffering. Ease their distress and carry their burdens. We beg you to protect us from coronavirus and we pray for those that we name before you. We pray for Shirley, Betty, Hilda, Joan, Carol, Fern, the Nogle family, Fern, Dell, Nancy, Barbara, Mark, and those we name before you now in our hearts. O oh God, incline your ear to us, make haste to deliver us. Sustain those who mother infants and children. Uphold the parents and grandparents who now must school their children. Provide enough food and resources for families. Grant safe pregnancy and delivery to expectant parents. And minister to those who endure infertility and miscarriage. Bless the countless relatives, medical workers, and hospice volunteers who give to others mothering care. Embrace all for whom today's celebration of mothers is difficult. O oh God, incline your ear to us. Make haste to deliver us. Always loving God, we are bold to add our own petitions. O oh God, incline your ear to us, make haste to deliver us. At the end, bring us all to you, you who are our way, our truth, and our life. O oh God, incline your ear to us, make haste to deliver us. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now sing the Lord's Prayer using the phrases debts and debtors. Mm -hmm.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. After our closing hymn this morning, we are going to have uh, breakout rooms for a few minutes. Uh, and so please uh, stick around for that. And then uh, what we have been doing after that it is uh, those of you who want to come back and be in the main, uh, the main room and uh, catch up with one another and say hello, we leave the video up for you all to be able to do that. Oh, yes. And uh, when we break you into breakout rooms, make sure you hit join or accept. So now Travis is going to share the screen. And uh, our final hymn today is um, You Are the Way. And it's in our Cranberry Hymnal number 758, Cranberry 758, or in our green Lutheran Book of Worship 454, 454. <laughs> realized that I made a mistake in the uh, green LBW hymn number. So if you spent that time uh, trying to find it, uh, I invite you to sing it uh, on your own uh, later today. So now we will uh, place you in breakout rooms. And the question, uh, if you would like to talk about a uh, topical question today, it would be, um, where have you seen life and truth and journeying together this week? So where have you seen uh, life and truth and journeying together this week? And now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes.